So we have our map board template here for our shipping container models. Uh, what we want to do now is nest all these fellas together. So basically, you guys are going to come up with your with your designs, referencing your. I'll just open up SketchUp here, referencing your three D model. Uh, you're going to come up with your designs for laser cutting. Now we have a maximum size that we can laser cut, which is a uh, seven hundred by five hundred. So what I'm going to do is there are two options here. Uh, if you've got uh, a design already open in Adobe Illustrator, you can change your artboards. So if you look up at the board there, you can see artboards on the side. It's just two little pages together. And what I can do is I can change the background here. The background is going to be 700 by 500. Now, you don't want your work to be going directly up to the edge because um, actually we've, we've changed the settings in the laser cut, uh, cutter. It will actually handle 7 by 500. It should do anyway, let's see. 700 by 500 high. So 700 wide by 500 high. Um, here we go. Now, so uh, all of this stuff here, once you've got your head around the scale and uh, dimensions and you know what is what, you can uh, delete a lot of this stuff. So um, you can either drag this template over into a new document or just work in this document and save it as a new title. So I'm just going to delete all of this around here. It's kind of in the way. And here we go. So the first thing I want is I want a 12 meter container. This this one on the left here. So I hold down shift, grab the two. I also need an end piece here. So I'm going to grab that. Hold down shift and select. There we go. I'm going to copy and paste. And I'm going to drag it up to the corner. So there's everything I need for making my first container. It could be an idea to drag your template over to the side here. So let's see, I'll drag all this over to the side so you can work on it. You can drag it into your workspace. So if I zoom out there, you can see what I have. I've everything left out to the side here and I can drag it in uh, as I want it. So um, here we go, we'll zoom in. And I'm just gonna grab this guy and move it into position. Now the closer you put your pieces together, the better. So um, one thing you can do is you actually don't have to, um, you don't have to cut both of these lines. If you put them side by side, uh, you can just cut one of them. If that makes sense. If you put these two lines together, just like that. Um, with the direct selection tool, I can delete one of those lines. This might get a little bit tricky for you guys, but basically in effect, if I move this over, you'll see that line is missing. Okay, now that can be a little bit confusing and it could open you guys up to errors. So maybe what I'd say is let's just move your containers right beside each other like that. Okay, just make sure there's no real overlap. Um, this fella here. What I can do is I can move it up. Actually, yeah, so I got my I got my wall and I got my floor here and I got my end. So you will need two ends. Command C and if you go Command Shift V, uh, it allows you to just move the container straight down and it's kept it perfectly in line. Uh, it can be a little bit slow, so I'll just drag it straight down here and it should snap to the other piece. There we go, and you can see obviously because that's the floor. Um, it, it doesn't line up perfectly there, but that's all good. Now, what I need is I need two more of these guys. Command C and Command V. Bring it down here. Move it into position. Double check with no overlaps. There we go. Now, before I copied and pasted it, I would have been prudent. It would have made sense to move this up a little bit closer. So I got everything there. Now, so we're making maximum use of our space there. This guy, move it up a little bit. A uh, big error you guys could make is if you end up putting your lines overlapping. So if I go too far here and I end up with this, you're gonna cut into your other piece, your other floor or your other wall. So I'm just gonna move it down, make sure it's on the line or below the line, okay? Uh, so now what I have is that's a 12 meter container, good to go. Um, and I can laser cut that straight away. However, if I go back here, I can see that um, my my containers 
uh, when my front container here has a little window on the front. So what I can do is I can get my window in there and uh, let's see. Sorry, I think there's an animal over in the next room. Uh, okay, let's see if that audio came through. And let's move this up. Cool. Now I'll get my use my rectangle tool over here to make my window. You guys can put on cladding, you can do whatever you like. If you're ever unsure what's a sidewall and what's a, a, a floor and a roof, if you just look over at the side here, because they look similar height, okay, they look pretty close. However, if you look over at the side, you can see our side wall was the top piece and our floor was the bottom piece. So top, <coughs> bottom, or sorry, excuse me, side wall, floor, side wall, roof. Okay. Um, now, I was talking about doing that window there, like we see in our SketchUp model. There we go. That's just a super basic version. There's our window. You can start putting in doors and that kind of thing. Jack? Um, what color do you want? Yeah, so basically we can choose there um, what Jack has on his computer is um, a round circle with um, basically a cross in the middle like panes of glass. So you can cut out the, you can either etch it or you can cut it. So if you guys want to etch anything, if you make the lines red, that would make it really helpful. So uh, if you make anything you want to etch, just make it red and um, that'll, when it comes into the auto laser program, we'll know straight away. It'll, it'll, the auto laser program will detect it and we'll know we can, um, we can just cut it straight away without having to ask anyone. So in effect, I have one container there good to go. Maybe I want, if I look at my model up there, I have two um, shipping containers together. Now it is possible to um, make one large box, okay? That is uh, two containers kind of stitched together if you like for the sake of this tutorial i'm not going to go in that into that right now but um it is a simple case of making your roof twice the width twice the width across here then all of and also making your uh, end your end pieces uh twice the width as well and you will end up with a double container all in one if that makes sense okay so your roof and your floor are going to be twice as wide and also your ends are twice as wide um, so you would have in effect something about this big for a roof okay I don't want to go into too much detail on that right now uh, that's one container I can um, do the six meter container I'm just gonna grab my pieces over on the side here move them into place and with the direct selection tool, it's good to just over hover over the items you want. You can stay inside the items. If you use the, the selection tool, the black one, it'll only select what you have gone over. Command C and Command V. Always keep your originals out at the side so that, that way you, um, any time you edit something, you always have your originals to go back to. Uh, I'm gonna move this a bit closer. Regretting now I didn't move these a little bit closer at the start, but there we go. Um, Okay, beautiful. Now, once you get these lined up in here, and you get your six meter and your 12 meter perfect, what you can easily do is just copy paste them over because um, yeah, once you get your, your own template done, you should be pretty good to go from there. Now, if I copy paste all of this, I will have everything I need for a six meter. There we go. Now what happened there is I copy pasted it, but I didn't try I didn't click it exactly, I didn't click exactly on the line and that deselects everything. So it's just be very careful that you click exactly on the line. Now I've seen here straight away this is this is pretty lucky. Um, I can see that we can get a 12 meter and a 6 meter container right beside each other. So we got loads of room. And there we go. Beautiful. And now with nesting, you can move these around. It's almost like Tetris. You can move them around into whatever position you think works best so you can get the most out of the sheet. There we go. Now, 
one thing that's done with CNC machines and um, with CNC machines and laser cutters is you can when you cut out a piece instead of the piece falling out from the original material you're cutting from you can actually put in tabs now to put in tabs right now could be a little bit time consuming so we're going to avoid that putting in tabs will allow the pieces that you've cut out to stay in the original piece that you you've cut from if that makes sense um, because it's time consuming and we're tied for time, we're actually just going to put our initials on here. So with your initials, um, there we go. It's probably going to come up super small, by the way. So you'll have to zoom in on, oh, that's super small. Let's see, text. And I go PM. Oy, oy, oy. This little fella came up. Little perspective tool came up there by mistake. So text tool. I can go over here to the size and I'll just make it quite big. There we go. And PM done. You don't want it too big. Um, your initials will not come out unless you do the next step. You have to right click on your initials and, sorry, select it first and right click and go create outlines. Uh, you will see if we go over here into the outline, that's what you're after. Okay. If uh, the the text tool doesn't uh, doesn't actually have um, a vector line around it until you create an outline, okay. Now I'm gonna plonk that somewhere in my model, maybe here, and what I can do is just copy paste it around the model. Okay, um, I'm fifty fifty on uh, whether this is will be necessarily worth it. Um, we may do a backflip on these initials, guys, because if it actually interferes with your model, um, I don't know, your shipping container, maybe if you had your initials all over it, um, maybe it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. Uh, probably the if you make them nice and small, the laser cutter can cut quite small, so that could be, uh, or can etch quite small. That could be an easy way to, uh, to keep your record in there. So I think that for this size looks pretty good. Fancy command V and just put them on all your pieces that way when you cut it out and when when you guys are moving these around the room and you're gluing them together they won't get lost okay uh, Jack um, now, you know how you yes can yes you can so we've just had a request for a double container so I'm going to show you guys also how to do a double container hands up who reckons they want to do a double container oh then okay we have to cover it so here you go um, now, I'm going to copy, paste this fella here, okay, or let's see, no, we won't do it that way, I go command Z, I'm going to grab these fellas over on the side, we go for uh, 12 meter, now your side walls remain the same, you don't have to do anything with your side walls. Your floor is going to, in height, the way I look at it right now, okay, so it depends on the orientation, whether I talk about height or width, but in this scenario, the height on the screen of the uh, floor is going to double. So if I go up to my transform, I can see there that the height is 68. I'm just going to double that, which gives me 136. So I'm going to change that to 136. Beautiful, and there, all of a sudden, I have a double container, Good to go. But hold on, what are we missing? What also needs to change? Who's the smartest here in the room? If I've changed, if I've changed the roof and the floor, what also? Sorry, the sides. Good stuff, Alex. Yes, you're immortalized on YouTube. There is the smartest here in the room right now. Are the quickest? Are the most focused? Let's see. Um, so with the sides, it's a little bit different for this. I'm going to grab this one. Here you go. I've copy pasted this on top of itself. No, I haven't. Command C and Command V. What actually changes here is the width. So for the floor, we change the height. For the end pieces, we change the width. And if you're uh, unsure of what's happening here, just reference the video later on. Um, the width here I can see is 72 wide. Let's see, is that correct? No, it's 68 wide, actually. Oh, beautiful. So the magic number here is 136. 
because uh, obviously we have changed our floor to 136 high, so our sides will be 136 wide, and you will see why in a moment. 136. There you go. Beautiful. And we go A. Here we go. I don't know why I said A. Uh, v is the direct selection tool. Now, folks, what we have here is we have a sidewall. We have a roof and a floor. And we have an in piece. There we have a double container. Let's see if there's going to be a little bit of luck. Can we manage to get a double container in here? Oh, yes, we can. So I've lined that up. You can see there's a little bit of an overlap over here. Be very careful of your overlaps. If you click on a shape and press Command Plus, you can zoom in on that shape. So a little bit of an overlap there, so I can move it down. No overlaps, unless the lines are directly on top of each other. Now, um, OK. If you guys want, you could maybe, you're going to have to keep track of what container is what. So one thing you could do is you could write on the side here what is a front container, what is a back container. The one thing I haven't done is I haven't put on any features here. So I haven't put on any cladding. I haven't uh, put in any doors and windows. If you want to put in a door, I'm going to let you guys figure out the scale yourself at this stage. But just the rectangle tool again. Now you can be more accurate with your door sizes. Uh, don't stress too much about it. If it looks, if it looks in proportion, it'll be fine. We are fairly tight on time at this stage. Um, with cladding, use the pen tool. Uh, this is how you use the pen tool, folks. Uh, here we go. I'm going to clad this fellow over here. So click once, click twice. If you hit escape, you'll be able to start fresh again. That's like, for example, a little bit of cladding. Now, um, you could con continue that all the way along. Uh, it's a good idea to copy paste, make use of um, repetition, shapes that repeat themselves, and Command C, Command Shift V. I've copied directly on top. I'll move that over. It's a little bit slow, so if I drag it over and hold down Shift key at the same time, that will uh, keep it in line. So watch what happens while I'm dragging here. I'm dragging it over. Oops. Uh, vertically, it's gone out of line. If I hold down the shift key, it snaps into position. There we go. So I could put that along there. I could put some curves with the pin tool. Click here. Click here. OK. Maybe it's a, a wave house. I don't know. Get creative. OK. And if I copy paste that down, this could be a window. Here we go. I'm going to turn this into a window right now. Pin tool, straight down, hold down the shift key to keep a straight line. Uh, that looks pretty good. Uh, escape, use V on the keyboard, that's the selection tool. Uh, Command C, Command V, and I'm going to move this fella into position. Whoop, grab it again. Oh, I selected too much there. Here we go, just this one. I'm going to move this down here. Now I want to delete this end line here, so to do that I press A on the keyboard for the direct selection tool, just delete that individual guy, uh, V again, select all these guys. Make sure there's no fill inside your shapes, so the fill is over here, just make sure there's no fill, you just want to have a stroke. I'm going to move this up. I think that window is a little bit too drastic. I think the poor glass makers will be stressing out trying to make this window. Uh, so I'd probably make my curve a little bit more gradual next time. Let's uh, finish it off. I'll just close in this side. And now it's a window. OK, so try and get a little bit more creative than just boxes and rectangles. Um, use the pin tool's good effect just to kind of get make your make your house look a little bit more funky. Um, round windows use an ellipse. So for example, if you hold down here, you can grab an ellipse. And instead of the window I had, I could make a window like this. And if I hit V on the keyboard again, I'm going to delete my original. And now I've got a much more swanky looking video that could be in a, a Californian Malibu house, maybe, you know, $10 million house. They can afford for fancy glass like this. Uh, yeah, so maybe you can aim, you can imagine that you've got a crazy coin for your house. Even though, will your client have a huge amount of money? This case, not a lot. So maybe, I don't know, maybe you could repurpose some glass. You could come up with a cheap way to get an expensive look. I don't know, it's up to yourselves. Now, um, I'm going to finish the video now, unless anyone has any good questions we can add into the video. Now, 
All right, here we go.